In this lesson, we're going to learn how to solve exponential equations involving word problems. There's lots of different applications for these word problems in real life, usually in biology or finance like investments. And they are used to model growth and decay. For compounding interest, continuous interest, population trends, and lots more. One of the most common applications of this would be carbon dating or investments. For continuous growth, we use the model of constant growth that we are, we are already familiar with. And this is y equals ab to the x, where a is that initial value and b is the change factor. Well, we introduce a new variable into the equation now called e. And e is just a number. It's kind of like pi. It's a symbol for a number. And basically when they discovered e or founded e, they were playing with scenarios where they increased how often something was compounding, was gaining interest, and they did it more and more and more and more and more until basically it converged to this number e. And so we can rewrite our constant growth model or generic form using e for a continuous growth. a still represents our initial value, B is our still our change factor. R is used for the constant growth or decay rate. And K is used for continuous growth or decay rate. And then E to the K is our annual growth factor. So, or annual change factor for continuous growth. And B, is equal to e to the k. B is for constant growth and e is for continuous growth, but we can kind of go back and forth between them using this fact here. B, whoops, wrong tool, equals e to the k. <clears throat> so we're gonna learn to identify some key values here. We have an equation already written and we're going to identify each piece. A is usually the easiest thing to find because, because it's that coefficient. It's that initial value. B is equal to E to the K. So in this case, E to the K is this whole piece right here. E to the point zero four one. And then if you type that into your calculator, we do second LN 0 0.041. E raised to the 0 0.041 is about 1.04185. Since this number is over 1, it indicates growth, and it's growing by a rate of 0 0.04185. That's how much it's over 1. And in percent form, that's 4.185%. The K value is the actual exponent in the equation. That is our continuous growth rate. And that's 0 0.041. That's all at once. So using that example as your model, look at number two, pause it and fill out the pieces. You should have found that the initial value is 7,500. The B value is e to the k, so that's e to the negative 0 0.059, and decimal form is 0.9427, which indicates decay because it's under one, it's less than one. To figure out r, you have to do one minus that to, to see how far below one it is, and that gives us a rate as of 5.73%. Then the k value is the actual exponent in the original equation, and that's our continuous decay rate and that is negative 0 0.059. So we'll use that to help us write our own equations. In this first example, it says a person invests 100,000 at a nominal rate of 12% interest per year, compounded continuously. I highlighted that because it's important. It's going to change the way we write our equation because of that continuous fact, that continuous rate is meaning that we're going to have to use e in our equation. 
<clears throat> what will be the investment value of the investment in 30 years? Now you could just do this over and over and over again for 30 years, but that's not very fun. We wanna use our equations that we already know how to use because it's easier and more effective and more accurate. <clears throat> so A is the initial amount. The initial amount invested was $100,000. K is the continuous growth rate, which was 12% which makes e to the k e to the 0.12. And then we can get that in decimal form to help us find r. e to the k is 1.1275, which makes r that overage, 0.1275, which is 12.75%. Then we can use these pieces to write our equation. So y equals 100,000 e to the k, t is how many years, which if you're just writing an equation, you can leave it as t, but since we know it's 30 years, we can go ahead and plug in 30. So then you would just type this in your calculator no need to do it by hand. 100,000 times E to the K times T. And we get 3659823 point. Oh, I ran out of room, four, four. So after 30 years, if you invest, invested $100,000 at a continuous growth rate of 12%, you would have $3 million, over $3 million. That's not too shabby. In the next example, we'll talk about doubling time. Doubling time is the time it takes for an investment population or something else to double its quantity. And basically what we're looking for is how long it's going to take to double. So we have an example, the population of a town is 470 people in the year 1980, and it is growing continuously at 3.7% a year. What did the population, sorry, when did the population double in size? So if we're using our continuous growth rate model, then if it's doubling in size, then that's going to be our ending amount or our desired value. So if we double 470, that's going to put us at 940, which means that the y value is going to be 940 for it to double. With the initial value of 470, our growth rate at 0 0.037, and we're looking for t. So that means we're going to have to use our natural logs to help solve for t. Since it's up here in the exponent, we need to get it out of there. First, we're going to divide by 470. Now, if you divide by 470, you just get 2 over here, which kind of makes sense because it's doubling, so it's multiplying by 2. And then we need to get the t out of the exponent. So next we're going to natural log both sides. And what happens when we natural log the right side, the natural log of e is just one. So our exponent drops down. And then our last step is to, whoops, divide by the coefficient. And that's going to give us our doubling time. And that comes out to be 18.37 years. Uh, did I get that backwards? Might have been 7.3. Let me check. Yep, I did get it backwards. 7.3 years. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And then it's asking when did the population double? So if we started in 1980, and we add about 19 years, that puts us at 1999. And that's it, it's all at once. <clears throat> In the next example, go way down here, there we go. 
we have half life. So we did doubling time and now we have half life. And if you noticed in the first example, when we simplified a little bit, we ended up with a two for doubling on the left side. So you might notice a little pattern here. We have, um, actually, I want you to try it. Pause it and try it. If you wrote your equation, we're looking for how long it took to have half as many fish. So half of 500 is 250, which means that our ending value is 250, our initial value is 500, our decay rate, so that's gonna be negative because it's decaying, is 4% and then we're looking for T. Now, if we solve for T and divide both sides by 500, we end up with a half over here, which makes sense because it's half life. So you might could even skip that first step and just say half equals this continuous rate times time. Then natural log both sides. When you natural log E, it makes one and our exponent drops down. And then in the last step, we have natural log 0.5 divided by negative 0.04. And then we just type that in to figure out how long it is. And I got 17.33 uh, years, I, yeah, years. It said 4% a year, so that's years. And that's all, it's all at once. Pretty straightforward, huh? Once you get oriented to how to write the equation, then you can figure out the rest pretty easily. In this example, we have caffeine has a half-life of about five hours. Suppose you drink a cup of coffee that contains 200 milligrams of caffeine. How long will it take until there is less than 10 milligrams of caffeine left in your bloodstream? Give your answer to one decimal place. So they gave us how long it takes to be halved, half-life, but we don't know the rate. So we're gonna have to figure out the rate before we can figure out the rest of the problem. We know the general equation, e to the kt, and we know it's half, so half equals e to the k, and we know that the amount of time it takes to get to half is five hours. So we can use that to solve for k, and then once we have k, we can use k to figure out um, how long it's going to take to get to 10 milligrams of coffee. Now, you might be careful at this point. Um, you might leave K in its exact form because when you round, you're going to get a rounded answer, which is going to be a little bit off. So you might be cautious with that. If you are going to use the decimal form, I would make sure to go to lots of decimal places just to be more exact. Uh, it's going to create a lot of rounding error because it's exponential. So your rounding is going, your rounding errors are going to be exponential. It's going to be a lot. Now that we have K, we can write our general equation. We have Y equals our initial value times E to the K 629T. And what we're looking for is when that amount will be less than 10. So that's our ending amount, less than 10. You can set it equal to 10 and solve like normal, but um, then you'll go ahead and solve. So go ahead and try it. As you're working on this, I want you to be careful with the inequality. So we know that we want it to be less than 10. We want the amount in our bloodstream to be less than 10 milligrams. So we divide by 200, we natural log both sides, and what happens is we have a negative coefficient in front of the T. And when you divide by a negative, it flips the inequality. So make sure you flip that. And then we type in natural log 0.05 divided by negative 0.138629. And we get about 22. Or right, it said go to one decimal place, so 21. 0.6 hours. So it would take 
at least 21.6 hours to have less than 10 milligrams of caffeine in your bloodstream. Pretty cool, right? I love these. I think these are so fun. Last example, a colony of bacteria doubles in size every 20 minutes. How long will it take for a colony of 20 bacteria to grow to a population of 10,000? We don't have the rate. So I'll give you a hint. You're going to have to find the rate first, just like we did on the previous example, and then solve the rest of the problem. Go ahead and try it. Pause it. Try it. Come back. Hopefully you were able to get to this point. Uh, for K, you should, found, should have found natural log 2 over 20, or that's approximately 0 0.034657. And so make sure you go plenty of decimal places if you approximate. And then we can use that to write our equation where our initial value is 20 and our continuous growth rate is natural log 2 over 20 or the decimal. And you'll notice that it is positive, which is good because it's growing. So if you get a negative number here, you might go back and check your work because it should be growth, which should be positive. Then we're trying to figure out how long it takes to get to 10,000. So 10,000 is that ending value. So we sub that in for y, then divide by 20, natural log both sides, divide to solve for t, and this would be the exact solution. And then we can type that in to figure out the decimal of that. So natural log 500 divided by, I'm going to put this in parentheses to be safe. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Alpha x gives me the fraction template. In the top, I have natural log 500. In the bottom, I have natural log 2 divided by 20. And we get 179, whoops, I always do that, 179.32 minutes. And we could convert that to hours by dividing by 60 to be about three hours if it were asking for hours. And that's how you do that. I do have a table down here at the bottom of the notes. And this table is a different way to look at exponential growth and decay. So um, if you have a teacher that uses these instead, or if you have a textbook that uses these instead, um, these also work. It's a little bit different than the way I have approached the problem but you will end up with the same answers. And if you want, uh, you can go back and retry some of the previous examples that I've done with these formulas and you get the same example and then you can decide which one you like better. So that's one of the things I love about mathematics is there's not only one way to approach a problem and you get to choose which way is best for you. You'll notice in these examples, um, doubling time has a two as that change factor, that B value. And then half time has the half as that change factor or the B value. So it, it's using that constant um, growth model or decay model to translate into continuous. So that's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help.